Speed is defined as your rate of accomplishment with respect to time. Your rate of accomplishment. Speed in the kingdom and as touching this context. We're not discussing physics here. Speed with respect to destiny actualization is defined as the rate of accomplishment with respect to time. The amount of, of accomplishment that can be done can be manifested through the life of an individual with respect to time. It's called speed. When God wants to help you, he grants you grace to be able to do so much within a short time. Now, let me tell you why speed is important, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, the unit of destiny is time. The unit of destiny. Destiny is measured as a function of time. And we know that under normal circumstances, let me your attention please. Under normal circumstances, time is irreversible. Are we together? Time cannot be reversed. That means we cannot go into May 2024 ever again. It's gone. Gone forever. That means when time passes, as we say, many things have gone with that time. Under normal circumstances. That means we are called to be efficient. In fact, Jesus said this in John 9, I believe verse 4 thereabout. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. Listen, while it is day, for the night cometh where no man can walk again. In Ephesians chapter 5, when you read verse 15 particularly, he was speaking about walking circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. He said, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. The word redeem means to buy back. He begins to introduce a concept. How does a man buy back time? Are we together? There are three things I've learned about time. Number one, time can be invested. Time can be spent. And time can be wasted. Time can be invested. Time can be spent and time like currency can be wasted. Now, for various reasons, for various reasons, please listen. I, and and I, I just connect what I'm saying now to you, the teaching of pastor yesterday. I believe that this is a prophetic message that God is bringing about this issue of time. Remember pastor spoke a bit about delay yesterday? Are we together? For various reasons, the average believer right now already has time against him. Are we together? For various reasons. Let me give you some of them. For reasons of ignorance, for reasons of carelessness, for reasons of demonic factors, many already have time against them. We have carved out a name. We have given a name for a situation where time is against a man. We call it delay. We call it stagnation. Delay or stagnation is the name given to a situation where time is already against you. In other words, there's so much to be done in your life, but you are not catching up at the pace of the time that is left. If you are to live 80 years on earth and you celebrate 50 years, you are not celebrating 50 years. You are celebrating 30 years remaining. Are we together? Listen very carefully because this might concern many people now. For various reasons, many already have time against them. I'm telling you this. For starters, many people did not get to know God early. I hope you know it takes time to know God and to grow. Number two, many did not have the privilege of being planted under a teaching priest for structured mentorship early. And so they kept going around in circles and wasting their time. Are we together? There are two scriptural ways to redeem time. My God. Huh. Every time God wants to help a man redeem time, he introduces two things to your life. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. Please don't forget this. 
These are the two scriptural ways to receive help from God with respect to time. One is called restoration. Say restoration. restoration. Two is called time. I mean it's called speed. Restoration. What does it mean to restore? To restore means to bring events. Events that should have happened and to put them in your today. Events that could not happen in your yesterday. God is able to draw those events and bring it in your today. This is God for you. The destiny helper you would have met in 2019. But because of carelessness and insensitivity. The person came and passed and you could not see and recognize. God is able to reschedule a scenario in your today. That still makes you meet that person again. It's called restoration. Does that look like what is happening to someone? That in the name of Jesus, what could not happen because you were not sensitive? It came as an impression, but at that point, you had not grown spiritually to know what that impulse meant. And certain doors passed you. Certain opportunities opened and closed and you were not there. I'm praying for you, the God of all grace, even the Father of spirits, may he reschedule events for you again. Reschedule events for you again. Give you another opportunity again. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob had an opportunity to encounter the God of the Bible. But he was careless and he was not sensitive. He saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth with angels ascending and descending. Every time you see angels in motion, it means that God is, there is a transaction happening. And the angels go and come for the sake of the saints. Yet there was no portion for him in that encounter. How do you see such a glorious encounter and nothing got to you? He got up and said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. Do you know that it was after that event that the whole story in Laban's house started? Only God knows the message the angels would have told him that perhaps would have avoided a lot of tragedies in Laban's house. The next time Jacob meets with God is in chapter 32. And this time around, he was sensitive enough. God rescheduled an event again. God restores all. I want you to believe this. Are we together? God restores. God can restore. He can restore joy. He can restore peace. He can restore finances. You doubt me, ask Job. Job, a man who loved God, he got to a point where his life was torn into pieces. But in Job 42 and verse 10, I like this. The Bible says, and God, God restored. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. So the name of what Job went through was called captivity. But the Lord turned the captivity of Job. He says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Turn our captivity around. Let it be as though we were dreaming. Restoration. And then number two is speed. Let me give you four keys. Very quickly. I'll just list them. And then we'll pray. Four keys that activate acceleration and speed. Is someone ready to go forward? Four keys. When God wants to bring speed to a man, he helps you by opening you up to these four keys. And then you have accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time. Number one, wisdom. The first key that controls speed in the kingdom is wisdom. The presence of wisdom. Write for reference Matthew chapter 25, 1 to 13. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. There's no time to discuss that, but that was the story of the ten virgins. The first thing about that story is that all ten were virgins. So it's not an issue of righteousness or unrighteousness. It was an issue of wisdom and foolishness. Are we together? And the principal factor that made the difference was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom. If the bridegroom arrived early, all of them would be perceived as wise. It was delay that showed who was wise or who was foolish. Are we together? And the wisdom of the five was that they carried extra oil. 
Whereas the other five carried only healthy lanterns with just enough for that time. The moral of that story is that you can be righteous like the ten virgins and you will still suffer, the door will close and you will be outside. It was not righteousness and unrighteousness. Ten virgins, but five were called wise, five were called foolish. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom can help you to have accelerated accomplishments within a short time. Accelerated accomplishments. For instance, it is wisdom that teaches you as a leader to be able to multiply your results by setting up systems and structures. Are we together? Moses was wearing himself as a good leader because he did not know how to multiply his capacity and his results. And then a man called Jethro, his father-in-law called him and said, listen, you are a good leader, but from an administrative standpoint, you will weary yourself and you will die the death of a fool. He said, set up teams. Are we together? In thousands and hundreds, train and appoint people so that they carry out all these things and then you handle the weightier matters. Wisdom brings efficiency to men, to organizations. Wisdom. So many people can do much more, but they are not able to do it. They are not able to take advantage of the supplies of wisdom. Number two, favor. Exodus 12, 36. Favor. This one is powerful. Favor. When God wants to grant a man speed, he gives you an opportunity to encounter favor. Can we shout this together? Exodus chapter 12 and verse 36. One to go. Uh huh. You only get such things as you require through favor. Such things as you require. The Lord gave the people favor. Such things as they require. Esther chapter 2, please. Esther chapter 2. I like this one. Verse 8 and 9. This is Esther being prepared by Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins, to go and meet the king. Here's what the Bible says, 8 and 9. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also. So she was not the only one. Esther was part of the many young ladies. To the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. Read verse 9. Hallelujah. And the maiden pleased him. And she obtained kindness of him. What was the effect? And he speedily gave her. Stop. What did he do? It's not enough to give. You must be given on time. You can be given too late. The Bible says because the hand of God was upon her. The man speedily gave her speedily gave her speedily gave her is that a prophecy for someone speedily gave her in the name of jesus christ there are people who apply for jobs and it is within the power of the corporation to give them jobs but they keep everything there until the day you are owing you are owing what 10 years salary cannot pay you then they now give you the job you have been given but it came late are we together now? One of the things I learned about money is that if it does not come on time, its purpose will not serve. Money serves its purpose when it comes at the right time. Are we together? If you were supposed to fly someone, say, for treatment, and you need, say, 10 million naira, and the money arrives two days to the person's death, it came, it arrived, but not on time satisfy me early with your message is that in your bible someone say father oh come on come on come on shout it say father in the name of jesus i obtain grace for speed through favor pray in one minute favor favor he gave us speedily 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 Shabalaka paraka tasavranda kaparakas speedily 
in the name of Jesus, he gave us speedily. Please be seated. Hallelujah. So favor is connected to speed. That when the favor and the kindness of God comes upon a person, men will respond to you speedily. Systems will respond to you speedily. Number three, the third key that controls speed. Are we learning? You can pray speed provoking prayers. Speed provoking prayers. Speed provoking prayers. In 1 Kings chapter 18, when you read from verse 42 to 46, just write down for reference, 1 Kings 18, 42 to 46. My Bible, your Bible says that Elijah began to pray, praying for rain. He bowed himself and prayed, and he prayed again, and he prayed again, and he prayed again. Go to 46, please. By the time we get to 46, the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran. He ran before Ahab and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. The hand of God can come upon a man. Are we together? You can pray favor provoking prayers, but you can pray speed provoking prayers. Father, give me speed. Give me speed. Bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my business. Jesus was praying whilst he asked the other people to go to the other side. They used the boat and they left. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. So based on that, that scenario, you would say Jesus had been delayed for six hours. There were six hours, but as soon as Jesus was done praying, he did not need a boat again. He got up and started walking on water. In a short time, he had caught up with them. They saw him and thought he was a ghost. And that was when they said, if it be, if it be thou bid me come, that means can I come into this experience too I was using a boat and yes you walked on foot and he said everyone can come you can come you can come out a boat is a good means of transportation but not the only means of transportation there is another technology that can empower men that by foot you will even walk on water if it be thou the miracle in that story was not walking on water. The miracle on that story was showing that boat is not the only way to transport yourself to the other side. There are those who left you while you were praying and serving in church with no job. They said you will, if you just serve in church like this, your life will be miserable and you are feeling bad. It's been 10 years, no job. Let me tell you, there is a hand that can come upon men. And when that hand rests upon you in one year, you can get a job that is equal to someone's lifetime pay or establish a business that will bring you someone's breakthrough for life in one year. I believe this. Speed provoking prayer. Speed provoking prayer. Speed provoking prayer. God is able to give men speed when you take the time to pray. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story. I remember back then in Zaria when we started, I saw visions of the many things that God is doing. Some of them already manifested now. And I was wondering, how would God make these things come to pass? Because I didn't understand how these things were going to happen. How these things were going to come to pass. And I kept submitting myself in prayer because strategies come when we pray. Listen carefully. And I remember at that time, um, you know, the social media space was not the way it is now. And the Lord gave me an instruction. That time we did not even have videos. And he gave one instruction. He said, take your teachings and put them on social media and my angel will take it to the nations. And that is how I will announce you to the nations. Right from where you are. I didn't have access to the people and the systems and the structures that could provide a leverage for rising. There was no human way of gaining visibility with with the, 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 the current context as it was at that time. 
And with that simple instruction that came from the place of prayer, the rest is history. I can only say glory to God. Let me tell you the truth. Every time invested in strategic prayer is a time redemption adventure. Never see the time you invest in prayer as a waste. No. Prayer does not do everything. But where prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When you engage wisdom, prayer helps you to engage wisdom efficiently. Are we together? When you communicate value, prayer helps you to communicate value efficiently. You can pray speed provoking prayers. You can go to God and say, Father, I've made mistakes with my life. I didn't make the right choices. I was not serious about God. When people were serious with the things of God, I was there loitering around. And right now, I'm already disadvantaged as far as time and destiny is concerned. But give me speed. Bring speed to my life. If Jabez could pray, oh God, bless me, enlarge my territory. He was, the Bible says that the mother cursed him because of her pain. She called him Jabez. But a day came, he took that responsibility and he says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That means you can pray and say, God, give me speed. There are many of us who came from families where you have to solve the problems that were created before your arrival, before you even start facing your own destiny. As it is now, you've not started living your destiny yet. You are paying the price and correcting something that happened yesteryear. Enemies that were gathered before your arrival, you are still, you are still on a reconciliatory process with enemies that, that were brought by parents and people first before you start solving the problem of your life and you are in your 40s now or 50s now when will you finish that and then turn back and say i have my destiny you need speed say speed speed, speed. a man who started fighting with your father before your father passed on the man has vowed that for as long as he's alive you will not find peace and he's in a position as a gatekeeper now a major part of your life is being spent trying to broker reconciliation Finally, the man has gone to be with the Lord. But the price for waiting until he passed was 45 years of your life. When are you going to start that journey again? Because of that, no corporation could give you anything. Your name had been stained by that man. The man is dead, but the stain on your name is still there. No corporation will give you contracts. When are you going to tell them I'm innocent? It was a battle between my father, not me. There are many inherited battles that people are carrying. They inherited names that became padlocks and it locked many doors. You spent your life opening the padlock, not opening the door. Now you've opened the padlock. To open the door, you are even weak to open the door. You need help. Someone say, help me God. One more time, help me God. And so when Isaac asked Jacob, as Esau now, he said, how come you have brought this speedily? He said, it is because the Lord has brought it to me. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. The final key that controls speed is the power of prophetic declarations. The prophetic is a mysterious spiritual operation that is able to bring speed. Second Kings 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 18 for time. Because this is what is about to happen to someone. Second Kings 7, verse 1. Second Kings 7, thank you. Verse 1 and then verse 18. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this, tomorrow about this, it is still a discussion of time. Tomorrow about this time, shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gates of Samaria. Go to verse 18. Verse 18 says, and it came to pass. I like that statement. And it came 
as the man of God had spoken to the king saying, this and that and that will happen. The man said, by this time tomorrow, and it came to pass. I don't want to bore you with how it came to pass, but it's an interesting story to read because the miracle happened through four lepers. People who were incapacitated. The spirit of God began to move around them. The idea was always there, but the grace to receive it was not there. One day they said, look, why sit we here till we die? He said, let's just get up and give ourselves to our enemies. Perhaps we are of no use to ourselves. When prophecy comes, anything can be used as a tool. Whether it is a stick to bring the axe head out, whether it is a donkey to speak to you, once a prophetic word comes, everything you have will be enough to bring that prophecy to pass. Once prophecy comes, even if it's a little cruise of oil you have in your house, the prophetic can do something to it. It can multiply. What do you have in your house? Nothing except a little cruise of oil. He said, that's it. With the power of prophecy, I hope you know that the miracle the woman received was not just the miracle of multiplication. The first miracle was where to go and get the vessels from. And then those to buy it after filling the oil. All of them were miracles. It was one thing to get vessels. So there were people who could borrow her. Why didn't they borrow her money to pay the debt? It was prophecy that positioned those people. Don't you think he just said go and borrow vessels? Her problem was that she was alone. There was no man to help her. So her children were going as collateral. But when the prophet came... He said, men have been positioned to help you. Meet them. The same way Jesus said, go to a street that the rivers divide. You will see, go to a street that the roads divide. You will see a cult that no man, not even the owner. That means there are people holding things that is not for them. They are caretakers. Not even the owner had ridden on. Lose that cult and bring to me. And if they ask you, say the master had need of it. There are people holding opportunities. It came by revelation, but it's not given to them to execute it. They've kept it on their table, waiting for the one who prophecy will connect to them. Listen, we're going to pray in the next one or two minutes. My time is up. But two things will happen. One is that in the place of prayer, you are going to agree with God that a grace will rest upon your life that will bring speed to your life speed to your destiny Genesis 27 and verse 20 please keep that scripture projected while we pray when I looked at my life and I saw all the disadvantages that were there by default area of my life I made up my mind that I was going to learn about favor and learn about speed because if these forces were not at work in my life Based on my assessment, I didn't have a chance for an excelling life. Most of us here have already been dragged down by life for various reasons. I want you to know that there is hope this morning and grace is about to rest upon you. And Isaac said to his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly? How did you find the answers quickly? How did you scale the business so quickly? This will be your answer from today. Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. There are things you look for by yourself. But there are things that God brings quickly. I don't have time to show you certain things. But when God wants to help you. Maybe let me take a minute and talk about your finances. There are two ways to prosper. One is by your value. When you exchange your value, you refine it, you exchange it and serve it with excellence. But when God wants to give you acceleration, he connects you with established people. The money you are looking for is currently with established people. Money is a zero-sum game. It's not lying anywhere. It is in somebody's account right now from a financial standpoint. When God wants to help you, he creates proximity between you and helpers. The helpers are established people. It is the person who has that can give the person who does not have. Are we together? Relationships are powerful. Who likes you matters. Everybody blesses according to his riches. Everybody. So when God wants to help you, 
in addition to your value and everything you have, he will connect you to strategic relationships. One strategic relationship like Lot and Abraham. One strategic relationship like Abraham and Abimelech. One strategic relationship like Esther and Ahasuerus. One strategic relationship like Ruth and Boaz can redefine your possibilities. Are we together? Let's rise. I don't know what you may have gone through. I don't know what you are going through right now. Perhaps in light of the prevalent economic situation. Perhaps in your organization. Perhaps in your spiritual life. But I want you to know. I started by telling you that there are tripartite three forces you need. As far as your excelling in life is concerned. Wisdom and faith and power are we together and that God is able to enhance a man's destiny by granting him access to speed you're going to pray one prayer one faith-filled heartfelt prayer Lord bring speed to my life someone pray bring speed to my life bring speed to my life let it be a very sincere prayer bring speed to my life speed to my destiny that when men say how is it that thou has found favor in ministry how is it that Lagos has opened up to you so quickly you can say like Jacob it is because the Lord has brought it to me it is because the Lord has shown me mercy it is because the Lord has given me the treasures of darkness and the secret riches in secret the riches in secret places it is because the lord has taught my fingers to fight my hands to war hallelujah hallelujah let me stand on the existing grace now and speak over your life oh your season has come oh, 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 oh. your season has come oh, 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 oh. salvation has come oh, 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 oh. salvation has come Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 oh. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I stretch my hands over everyone under the sound of my voice, and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead right now the grace for speed wherever you are i decree and declare may that grace rest on you now may that grace rest on you now take that grace now in the name of jesus please help that gentleman help those under the anointing so they don't injure themselves i decree and declare where you have been crawling i give you wings in the spirit you will run like elijah in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, may my God put 10 years in one year, 10 years in one year, one year in one month, 10 years in one year, 10 years in one month, in the name of Jesus. Where you have been forsaken, so that no man will walk through you. I call you an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Hear me. In the name that is above all names. I pray for you. Anybody who has what it takes. To lift you. Listen. Listen. The man at Bethesda. John 5. When Jesus came and said. Why are you still in this situation? His answer is found in verse 7. He said, I have no man. When the water is there to help me, I have no man. I pray for you. 
the north, the east, the south, and the west, wherever the helpers of your destiny are, I declare by prophecy, may they gravitate towards you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 2, when you read from verse 28, it says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. The secrets of the Lord, the Bible says, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenants. We triumph in life on the strength of the secrets we have found, the mysteries of the kingdom. I pray for someone, the miracle of open eyes. The miracle of open eyes. May you see what others have not seen. Let it give you an edge in life. Let it give you an edge in business. Let it give you an edge in your career. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you are great warriors, but it takes beyond a bow and a spear to bring Goliath. Just because you have tools, don't mean you are allowed to use any of them. You must be directed on what tool brings what victory. You may have your armory, but if you stand before Goliath with your sword, you may not defeat Goliath. If you stand before Jericho with your weapons, you may not scale through. Are we together now? God must reveal to you what strategy exerts dominion over what season. The challenge with many people is because the Red Sea parted, you always want the Red Sea to part. There are times the river will not part. You will walk on water. There are times God will give you a boat. The strategy for every season, I impart that grace upon you. The strategy for every season, I impart that grace upon you. The strategy pre-COVID may not be the same strategy post-COVID. Just because you succeeded before COVID, the grace to reinvent yourself, the grace to evolve, the grace to innovate, to obtain higher and greater strategies applicable for the time, I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, where you have been stagnated, like Moses told the nation of Israel, go forward, go forward, go forward, make progress, accelerate, go forward, I prophesy, go forward, Elevation Church, the global expressions, go forward in America, go forward in Canada, go forward in Europe, go forward in Lagos, go forward in Abuja, by all godly means, make progress, in the name of Jesus, run through troops, leap over walls, in the name of Jesus, let there be an avalanche of testimonies. Let young people in this church do mighty things before the end of 2024. In the name of Jesus, accelerated testimonies, excelling in ministry, excelling in business, excelling in family, excelling in careers. I open the tulip gates of nations for you. Access the nations needed for your rising. Access the nations needed for your shining. Access systems and structures. We put them under pressure for your sake. Financial systems, economic systems, political systems. We put them under pressure for your sake. By all means, go forward. Go forward in righteousness. Go forward in grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as you make progress, I pray for your spiritual life. You will not prosper at the expense of your prayer life. You will not prosper at the, extent, at the expense of your integrity. You will not prosper at the, extent, the expense of your loving Jesus. That while you rise, while you accelerate, while you make progress, while you command speed, may your fire never die. May your prayer altar never go down. May your consecration never be compromised. In the name of Jesus, we are going to shout seven believing amens and I'm done. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God bless you.